Hi everyone. Welcome to today's episode of OBJ Venegets. So the topic for today is something that we have discussed in the form of an oski on our social media handle a few days ago. The question was based on Anan Kefali that happens to be a topic today and I thought that uh, why not just elaborate a little bit more on it. So first of all what does anan kefali literally mean so anan kefali an over here is the absence and enkefali is the brain so just simply speaking it is the absence of brain but uh, does it really develop like this and why does it develop is the first question so it has been postulated and it has been proven with evidence that uh, the deficiency and a few factors that we will be speaking about subsequently when they are uh, present these factors lead to deficiency or rather uh, irregulation of the neurulation process that happens so neurulation if i am going to be telling you roughly about it is the process in which the neural tube is formed it is divided into primary and secondary neurulation so the in this patient in these patients with anan kefali the primary neurulation process is affected and especially the cranial part of it or what we also call as a rostral part of it is affected but the secondary neurulation continues the way it is and hence often there is no abnormality that is found in the spinal cord and rest of the central nervous system in these patients with anencephaly but uh, does this actually directly present in the form of uh, anencephaly well not really and the reason i say that is that the first presentation of this is in the form of acrania and hence as you can see in this picture this is acrania and hence this is often also called as acrania anencephaly sequence now what is acrania again if i'm going to be speaking of it roughly so acrania a is absence and crania is cranium cranium can be spoken of as the vault or the skull vault if i'm going to be speaking skull so in this as you can see the skull bone which ideally should have been over here is absent but the brain's tissue is still present over here the brain's tissue is still present over here and hence this is called as acrania so anencephaly often begins and in fact most of the times begins as acrania and acrania when it initiates in the first trimester the surrounding environment ends up absorbing all the brain material and hence eventually it forms anencephaly so it starts as acrania and then it becomes anencephaly when the brain is present at first but after eventual absorption and all the processes only the meninges are left and the brain's parenchyma is completely absorbed so if i'm now going to be dividing pregnancy into five phases then if i'm going to be dividing pregnancy into five phases there is a preconceptional phase which comes first obviously wherein the patient is yet to conceive then there is a first second and third trimester and finally the postpartum period so in the first period that is a preconceptional period the essential point about anencephaly is that folic acid is known to be a factor which if deficient because of several processes the patient can be taking a drug that is impairing the absorption or metabolism of folic acid it can be something like uh, an anti epileptic drug which i have mentioned next or something like methotrexate or there are several other drugs that can be given there are anti cancer drugs which act on folate mechanism they inhibit the metabolism of folic acid so these drugs can cause a deficiency of folic acid and that eventually is going to impair neurulation so it is always advised that women should be taking 0.4 mg of folic acid prior to conception for at least 3 months whereas if a female has had any history something that we are going to be talking in the postpartum period over here so if a female has had any history of any baby with any neural tube defect and it may not just be an encephalitis it can even be something like meningocele or arnold chiari syndrome or spina bifida in those patients they should be consuming folic acid within the dose of 5 mg another risk factor in preconception period is the consumption of anti epileptic drug and the most important one is valproic acid or valproate which is given it is a drug that is known to ensure a uh, epilepsy free interval for a longer duration than many other drugs but it is just not safe for patients who are willing to conceive and it should be changed prior to pregnancy and then pregnancy planning should be started apart from that diabetes mellitus is known to cause diabetic embryopathy simply speaking the diabetes forms in diabetic women there are free radicals that are being formed by because of the excess of glucose these go and attack your genes those genetic changes eventuate in the formation of several defects 
one of the defects in the central nervous system is neural tube defect the most common is sacral agenesis syndrome but also it can lead to neural tube defects and anencephaly the other one a very lesser known factor is hypervitaminosis a hypervitaminosis a is basically excess of vitamin a if consumed retinoic acid is the name for it if it is consumed in excessive quantities then it can also lead to neural tube defects but now once a patient has conceived how do i detect it so in the first trimester as we discussed earlier it will be seen on the viability scan or on the nt nb scan the nuchal translucency and the nasal bone scan as a crania as we saw there it will be seen on an ultrasound very easily and in second trimester if we are doing a malformation scan it has not been detected in the first trimester then it will be seen as anencephaly classic anencephaly will be seen where even the brain's parenchyma is not there it is just a flat structure if i'm going to be talking about the markers the analytes the serum analytes as we call it in the quadruple marker one of them is serum alpha fetoprotein now alpha fetoprotein is something in fetus that is like albumin in an adult so jo adult mein albumin hota hai in fetus it is alpha fetoprotein so it is also excreted through the meninges that are lying openly in the amniotic fluid and hence the serum alpha fetoprotein would be increased also given that all your neural tissue is now lying open inside because of the anencephaly because there is no cranial vault all your fetal tissue all your meninges are lying open in the amniotic fluid acetylcholine esterase is also going to be increased in the amniotic fluid if you are going to be doing an amniocentesis so these are the two things we don't really do an amniocentesis to look for acetylcholine esterase because just serum afp being raised and a malformation scan to see malformation or what we call as the target imaging for fetal anomalies that tifa scan is also going to be enough to give us the diagnosis of anencephaly the outcome for both of these is mtp it should definitely be offered because this fetus when it grows is going to have a very poor outcome either it may just die in the next trimester or it will die after birth within a couple of days or a few days at max in the third trimester though for women who are not registering early or for women who have been failed that we have failed to diagnose it which doesn't really happen this is a very straightforward diagnosis but in women who get registered late and they don't have a scan now our 20 our amendment of 2021 mtp act does allow that mtps can be done mtp amendment act was brought in uh, 2021 uh the initial act was enacted in 1971 but in 2021 they said that babies with congenital anomalies can be aborted it the uh, mtp can be performed at any gestation after consultation with a medical team a medical team should consist of a pediatrician or a neonatologist it should consist of a radiologist and an obstetrician so with the consultation of this medical board the abortion can be done but in patients or in facilities where this is not available and if it progresses to third trimester then because these meninges are lying open they'll be excluding fluid from it continuously the uh, the intracranial uh, the intracranial fluid the intracranial fluid that is present is going to be secreted intracerebral fluid will be lying out in the open because all the ventricles here are lying out in the open this will lead to polyhydramnios there is going to be a lot of amniotic fluid which can be detected on uh, ultrasound with raised afi as well now the part of post jetism here is that this baby lacks a pituitary gland and pituitary gland is known to secrete a hormone called as acth adrenocorticotropic hormone now i'll be teaching this in a later in an obgyn nugget in a later class our body or rather the fetal body has a fetal clock which determines when should labor begin there are multiple factors which initiate labor one of them is stretch responses of the uterus to the growing size of baby the other one is a fetal clock so whenever a baby is about to mature or in patients who have factors like pre eclampsia there are factors uh, which are stressors on the baby it starts releasing acth either at term or before term and that acth it goes and acts on the placenta and it initiates a fetal clock we call it a clock and ghadi ban jati hai wahan pe ban jati hai which says that the baby is now ready to deliver and the changes start happening there is labor there is onset of labor that happens now in these babies there is no pituitary so there is nothing there is no pituitary there is no adrenal gland either to make the corticosteroids in this baby the, there is no stimulus to the uh, adrenals i'd rather say because of which the labor is never initiated in time and hence these babies often go into postdatism but because of postdatism the baby is otherwise growing well it only doesn't have a brain but the baby's growth is going as per as per her his own growth potential 
this leads to macrosomia which is seen in any other birth with postnatalism and this macrosomia is eventually going to lead to obstructed labor now for that obstructed labor to progress there is face presentation now why face presentation because obviously the head which was going to be this big in a normal baby doesn't have this part of brain so when this part is not present it decides to take up the diameter which is the shortest diameter and hence that shortest diameter ends up being a face presentation and these babies when they go into labor are often delivered with a face presentation or this is a baby that i had delivered it had a face presentation here you can see that this face is completely edematous the eyes is the eyes have uh, literally been engorged the reason is just like in any other delivery when you deliver a baby with breech presentation there is some uh, there is some swelling of the breech whenever you deliver with kefal presentation there is a kefal uh, there is a caput succedens what we call as caput so basically because the lymphatics and the blood supply to that part that presenting part is impaired because of the cervix and all the structures all the blood flow gets restricted so in face presentation the face is always seen engorged the eyes are slightly seen uh, gog uh, are seen very goggy and this is a very classical presentation that we see so this baby was also an anencephalic baby here you can see that the brain material is missing over here the brain material which should have been this big is missing over here so this was an anencephalic baby that we had to deliver by face presentation and face presentation can only deliver if it is mento anterior although that is something that happens with only full normal babies but even in this baby this was a mento anterior baby that managed to that we managed to deliver apart from that also we need to know that in third trimester not just this but when this baby delivers if the baby ends up surviving postnatally then proper care should be given to not just the baby but also the mother the baby is probably never going to make it it will live for a few days and die but then you have to give proper counseling and you have to go counsel the parents that um, we can prevent this in the next pregnancy you have to give them adequate support so that they can be with the baby for as long as the baby lives and to prevent this in the next pregnancy they have to be advised that they have to start consuming folic acid in the dose of 5 mg 3 months prior to conception so that is it about our anencephaly today i hope you all liked this lecture here we spoke of five different phases during pregnancy in which we can prevent in which we can prevent anencephaly from happening how can we detect anencephaly if a latest provision of law is there to help patients about this baby at any weeks of gestation yes there is and finally what can be done postnatally for the patient to have a good postnatal period and also to prevent it in the next pregnancy thank you everyone for your listening today i hope to meet you all everyone in our next lecture of obgyn nuggets thank you signing off dr aditya